Hi guys, so we're filming a little spontaneous last minute video since Jackie came over. Hello! And we're doing a girls night out and we just figured we'd ask you guys questions. I feel like this video is mostly about Jackie. Always. Because she's the star. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. She's truly the star of my channel. But Jackie owns her own lash business. She's a lash artist. Mm -hmm. And so... Most of, the, most of the questions are based around starting your own business, and you guys are really interested in what she does. So I'll ask you the questions that people asked us, and then you can answer. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. You can chime in as well. Okay. Actually, you can. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to get Jackie to start her own channel. She said she... I am just what? so bad about being, like, diligent, you guys. It's, 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 a, lo it's a lot of it's work. Hard. It works easy but you don't see like we literally just spent half an hour trying to figure out like decent lighting since it's past like the normal good lighting hour it takes time editing takes time but I think it's it's worth it if it is to you but then you have to weigh that with the money you're missing out on and possibly like taking clients so Mm -hmm. If you guys convince me, maybe. Yeah, comment below if you want Jackie to start a channel. <laughs> they always comment asking for you to do it. Um, okay, first question we just posted on my Instagram to ask us anything about lashes or being an esthetician or anything business related. So the first one was, was there anything you didn't expect slash know until joining the beauty industry from legend underscore? Well... Actually, I guess we can both answer that. What would you say? Anything unexpected? Um, yeah. I guess two things. The first thing is I didn't realize how unexperienced and unknowledgeable I was until I was in the, in the industry. That's true. I think a lot of times people think that they are going to be very, very prepared and experienced right out of school, and I did not realize how much I needed to still grow until I was thrown into the industry after I got my esthetician license. So definitely don't feel like your chapter's behind or you're failing because really you don't start until you have that license in your hand. That's when you start learning. Um, and then I guess my other piece of advice that I have learned in the industry is the power of Instagram, especially if you have a visual beauty service like lashes or nails, um, makeup. Instagram is huge nowadays. So that was something that I learned. That's, that's good. Good stuff. I think, yeah, real good stuff. <laughs> Anything I did not expect. I think if you, the more clear you can have your vision be, the more helpful it is. Like Jackie knew in school she wanted to center a business around lashes. Mm -hmm. You figured out that you liked it and you, you had a very clear vision. If you don't know what you want to do, just in general, even for non-estheticians, if you don't know what you're going to do in life, you can't make a sex successful plan to get there. There's just no way and you can't create little micro goals to achieve the bigger picture. So that was something I struggled with, not knowing what exactly I wanted to do. And I get closer and closer to figuring that out every day. And I don't think you need to overwhelm yourself. I know it can feel overwhelming in school, but like, for example, if you are just totally lost, you don't know what you want to do. I think you can start with writing a list of like three to five things you literally just like doing, whether it's going to get coffee or doing your makeup or skincare. And I think, yeah, for me, <laughs> all like, the things <laughs> for me, skincare has been something I've always loved and been fascinated ever since I was little. I would like do little facials on Sarah, my sister, and like play around in the bathroom, but I just didn't think that was socially like an acceptable job. So I feel like as soon as you can like just realize what you're interested in, like you can make a job out of anything or a blog, whatever it may be. So just figuring out what actually you like doing because you're going to have to do that every day as long as you work. So it should be something you enjoy. So I guess that's my answer. Did that make sense? Yeah. And okay. to touch on that, you definitely can make a successful career in the beauty industry. I think that's something we yeah. both learned. Yeah. 
we came from two totally different paths um, originally. I think that if you asked us years ago, neither of us would have foreseen us being estheticians, yeah. but now we're both estheticians and we love it. Um, and we are just constantly proving people wrong that it's a BS industry, basically. Yeah, no, it's true. And like, I've always loved writing and I really enjoy creating content and social media. And it's like, as I am able to be myself and show who I am, like I've been offered things at Derma Plus to write blog posts, things like that. So just don't pigeonhole yourself and don't just think of it as this traditional, you're in a box kind of industry. Like you can bring whatever skills you have to the table and make it your own. There's so many successful beauty, skin, lash like entrepreneur so you can make it as big as you want don't listen to what your parents say or what you see online I mean that's all helpful resources but I just think it's about an abundance mindset and I know a lot of you message me saying you're concerned you've seen like certain salary ranges and it's like if you're able to retail if you're able to do other things you can make more money so yeah or, yeah. And don't feel like anything that you've already done that's un quote unquote unrelated has gone wasted. Yeah. Like for example, I was in college to be a therapist actually, and I totally just threw what I felt, well, I felt like I was just throwing it all out the window to pursue my lash dreams. And really a lot of what I did learn when I was in college has tied into what I do now. So everything really is related yeah. in one way or another. So don't feel like you are just yeah. giving up on something yeah. you're just tying it to something else yeah and you've learned something from different experiences I wouldn't trade going to a four-year school for anything even though I'm in a trade now that I didn't technically need that bachelor's degree for but I'm I, I wouldn't be the esthetician I am today if I didn't have that knowledge and other background but yeah, and I don't have a bachelor's degree, it's a, it's a and I'm still fine. But you guys, you learn. So. <laughs> I'm sure classes you took to be a therapist, like, are relevant when you're on the treatment table. People yeah, literally definitely. talk to you like you're their therapist. Yeah. It's crazy the things people tell you. Definitely. Okay, next question. Any thoughts on working in a suite or a space at home? Not sure what route to go. So I guess this person's thinking about opening their own business. Judy, what do you think? Your name's Jackie. Just call <laughs> we call each other Judy. It's an inside joke. We'll that you guys are in on. Obviously. Yeah, if you guys really want to know, comment below. Um, so, I guess my two cents. I am not a fan of combining your personal relaxing downtime space yeah. with work. If you are one of those people that can really, really keep it separate that close, then I think it's great. And it's obviously cost efficient, but I am one of those people even living 30 minutes away from where my last studio is, I still have trouble like leaving it, yeah, leaving it yeah. behind, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can really consume you. There's definitely a healthy balance, and for me, that just would not work. Okay. What do you think? I, I think the same. Um, yeah. Like, I actually work in an apartment complex that I manage, and there could possibly be a way to, like, find a space in the complex, if that makes sense, to open something, but I just wouldn't, I would want it to be separate from my home, but I know some people make it work for them, and for them it's the most feasible, like, first step for owning their business is to open a room in their house. I don't know for me I would want that so I think it really it's kind of a personal decision but of course it's more expensive to lease a space and then you're under more pressure to work a lot more hours you have less flexibility so I kind of have to weigh that. I do think if you are just starting out making a portfolio of family and friends then of course set up something in yeah. your extra room or even in your living room when your friends come over and you know start there but I would recommend just diving full full in. Nothing is going to kick you in the butt to find clients and make this a successful career than, like, stress. <laughs> yeah, and it's, I think it's sometimes we all get in this mentality of if I try one thing, it could be the wrong choice. But it's like there really is no right or wrong. Perhaps 
you just have to take steps and you, and you correct it or you change it or you evolve. It doesn't mean you did something wrong and then your business is forever. And a lot of spaces now just do day by day, which is a great option for yeah. people that are starting out. You can just start with one day, increase it to two days, increase it to three, and then eventually do a long-term lease where you yeah. have it all the time. Um, there are places where you can start in a shared space and then eventually yeah. kind of get your own space, like what I have. Um, so there's definitely different options that I think would be better for your own balancing yeah. than to combine it with your personal space. That's very helpful, I think. How long did it take glow, Go and Glow Lash to be go and go Lash. <laughs> go and glow Lash to be able to open her own studio? Um let's see. It took about six months. Yeah. I worked at a different lash company or under a different company for yeah, for about like six, seven months, seven months before I decided that I wanted to start my own. And like it basically started immediately. I would say that it didn't I didn't really feel like I got off the ground for a month and a half. Really? It's fast. Yeah, it is fast. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and okay, I think that's all the questions people submitted. We wish we could wait longer to hear more questions, but the light is not going to be super good. And the boys aren't either. <laughs> okay, and then so I had a question for Jackie because she recently launched a new product for her <laughs> business, which I am so happy for you for. Thank We like talked about like I remember mentioning it to you and you were like, I don't know, it seems like almost like a too far of a reach. And you were like, I don't know, could be possible? And now you did it. So I'm mm. so proud of you. Thanks. Okay. So tell us what it is and the process for launching it. So I just came out with the Glow and Go Lash Lash Shampoo. And for those of you that don't know what a lash shampoo is, it's basically a way to keep your lash extensions clean, kind of like how you shampoo your hair. You want to make sure that you keep your lashes clean. If you want more info about that, let me know. But otherwise, the process... Can we just interject? Because I yeah. love how you created it to make your clients, like, experience better. Yeah, And it's like me selling home care, like... The facials exactly. go so much farther. It's maintaining your results. Your lashes can't hold the weight of, like you said, the debris and the sweat and all that. So mm -hmm. you're creating something that ties together and is for the benefit of your client. Yeah, and it enhances the service as well. Yeah, definitely. So smart. And they're buying it directly from you, which increases your retail. So again, that's a way Jackie can make more money. Mm -hmm. And you're creating a system for people to like take care of their lashes like you are the go-to for all things lash. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. I interrupted. No, that's okay. Did you want me to touch on something else? Uh, tell us how, because to me, I would have no idea where to start if I wanted to create a product line. What was the process like for reaching out to a manufacturer? Did they reach out to you? How did you go about making the formula, getting the packaging, like finalizing it? deciding on the design, like what was the whole process like? Um, so first of all, I wouldn't recommend trying to do like your own products fresh out. I definitely had to try a lot of existing products, um, go back and forth contacting, say, hey, I don't like this ingredient. Why do you have this in here? Mm -hmm. um, like, why does this product sting? Just kind of like finding ingredients that I liked, finding somebody that I enjoy like working with, somebody that... And how do you use Google search? No, not Google search. So um, I don't when have you things. have a business in the beauty industry, you are going to get your supplies either from a bunch of different people or like you have one central person. So They're it's usually... an existing contact you have for getting your individual lashes? Exactly. Okay. Um, so... From there, you can either ask them, like, hey, do you know anybody that would, like, make this product for me? Or okay. um, do you make this product oh, already? Okay. Would you customize it for me? This is a phone call. Sorry, I'm getting super micro. Like, are you calling them? Are you emailing them? Yeah, you could either do phone call, email. You can do, like, WhatsApps. You could do Facebooks. And are they in America? 
nobody asking? Usually not. Usually not. Okay. No. You, I think for, like, skincare products, like, facial mm-hmm. products, they would be. Okay. But for lash products, most of them are not made in America. Okay. Um, I do get my glue from America, though. Okay. Um, and I lost my train of thought. Oh, and then you were asking me about the bottles. So you also want to, like, pick somebody that obviously has something that you think is aesthetically pleasing. So always ask for samples. Um, if they will give you samples, if there are some that I really did want to try that I went and bought. Mm -hmm. And then I actually created my own packaging myself by hand. So I created my own labels. And you found somebody who does that. Yeah, I actually, I did it on sheet label is where, um, is where I ordered it, but I designed it myself, like just on Adobe. And we'll put the link to Jackie's product below so you guys can see it buy it if you want but basically it's a lot of fine it's a lot of a trying it okay finding it trying it contacting them sometimes they'll contact you contacting them seeing if they'll work one-on-one with you to create basically what you want for you and then um you know adding the bells and whistles to it yourself yeah and then you, what, you get a square or something, people can buy it. How do people purchase it online? How do you set that up? Yeah, so I use Square for my booking. Okay. So I'm also going to be selling my products on Square, hopefully one day on Amazon. Well. So right now they're just in your store. You started just... Yes, okay. so first I'm starting store. Okay. And, um, you know, fine-tuning so cool. always. Fine-tuning. Okay. And then... Um, yeah, I'm going to have them available on my retail store, okay. and then hopefully I will expand and go after fine-tuning onto, like, bigger wholesaling myself. So, let's see. You definitely will. <laughs> it's just, like, setting the goal, like we said, like, you're clearly identifying your next step. You're at a very, you're setting reachable steps. They're clear, but they're doable, so you're not overwhelmed. Like, I'm creating a product, and I'm, I'm going to you know, have it sold on X, Y, Z. You're going to, like, see how it does, whatever. Maybe fine-tune from there. Get a patent, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She'll just take steps as needed. But Mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing to do what they call a fast launch and, like, get it out there, get people's feedback, and then you can fine-tune. But at least you're you're getting it out there and not getting overwhelmed by making it absolutely perfect and then never actually making it happen Mm -hmm. and if you are unsure then definitely I mean offer your clients products that are good in the industry existing like I carry products that are not by any means my own label that I know are amazing like for example black diamond for as a lash sealant I don't know that I'm ever gonna top that so I do carry them um yeah so so yeah (laughs) I think that's all of our questions that we have but if you guys have more comment below and either Jackie or I will answer them so thank you guys so much for watching we truly truly appreciate it I'm going to put Jackie's social in the description and mine as well so you can follow us on Instagram but yeah thanks so much for watching bye bye